Off the coast of West Africa lies one of the world's richest fishing grounds. But its treasures are being plundered. Foreign ships are raiding fish stocks, sucking the seas dry. Local fishermen who get in the poacher's way risk everything. It's a human feeding frenzy, driven by the world's insatiable appetite for fish. Billions of people rely on the ocean for food, but rampant overfishing is turning much of it into a watery desert. The United Nations estimates more than a third of the world's fish stocks are being fished beyond what's sustainable. In some regions, they're being wiped out. In conjunction with the European public broadcaster Arte, we go inside communities whose shores are being pillaged, and we meet the eco-warriors helping them fight back. These are the places where we draw our line in the sand and say to the poachers, you go this far, but no further. The waters around Saint Louis off northwest Senegal once teemed with fish. Local fishermen made a good living casting nets from small handcrafted boats called pirogues. But that world is vanishing. Ah, but look what's in the bag leg yak, man, man, get to do yak mat three. Parce que depuis plus de 30 ans ici. After a full day on the water, Yago's nets are empty. Industrial trawlers have depleted fish stocks in Europe and Southeast Asia. So increasingly, they're coming to West Africa. Dwindling catches are forcing locals like Yagu to go further out to sea. <laughs> Senegal's coastline has become a hunting ground where freighters and pirogues compete. Collisions are common. For small boats, they can be deadly. Nain <laughs> Parce que Birsat n'a pas de l'hôpital. 
afa amuñu dal sama dom bi mom nga jëk signalé ni ma papa man ka na mën ma xolé nek suñu gannaaw bi ma gesto xol ka mu nek boto bu mak bu nga xamanteni ci réayam dafa xam xamuñu na mu day bi ñu daw nak di xam moytu ci lañu dal bi mu ñu dalé dafa duggal gal gi suuf man nak dama daan ci côté bi sama loxo bi dafa kep man nek ci ndox mi du yag sax dafa won na sax elis bi bu ñewé dafa may jaar sama kaw yak mu ci gessi la xamni ki boto roumani la ma boto yu magi law sardegne yoy mais boto ba japp nako dafa daw ci sama digënté ak boto bi ak gal ki mom sama dom bi ba légui mo futti wul ha bis bobu ba ma nekké ci adina ba légui bis bobu lay so way am luma metti deug 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 ci bis bobu ta dootuma ka fatti ci adina injury has robbed him of his livelihood he can't feed his family without fishing the industrial ships come from europe russia and asia especially china some have papers to be here but the legal veneer can be deceptive karim sal is a fisherman turned activist who tries to monitor the intruders He says this ship flies the Senegalese flag to avoid inspections, but its co-owners are Spanish. C'est des prétenants, c'est pas des bateaux sénégalais. Il y a des matelots sénégalais, mais quand tu vas monter sur le bateau, tu vas voir que c'est des étrangers. Le bateau est étranger, le, le capitaine est c'est des étrangers, et le débarquement va en Europe. Et eux, ils y mettent des lames qui détruisent d'abord les habitats de ces poissons. Eux, ils n'ont pas des, des filets euh, sélectifs. C'est des filets qui euh, qu'on appelle des filets chaussettes qui ravagent tout. Ils ciblent des espèces mais ils pêchent tout. Donc on a 80% de leur pêche, ils les rejettent en mer. Ils sont en train de transformer les eaux euh, sénégalais en désert liquide. For many foreign ships, West Africa is the new frontier. It still has big reserves of fish, but it's being plundered with no regard for the future. The large trawlers can scoop up more fish in a week than the small boats do in a year. Local fishermen fear there'll be nothing left for their children. Karim and the other fishermen have declared this area a marine reserve in a desperate bid to protect it. On a créé une aire marine protégée ici parce qu'on a, on a remarqué que ici c'est une zone qui est très importante par rapport à la reproduction. Donc on a préféré euh, vraiment le protéger dans cette zone et c'est les populations eux-mêmes qu'on a, qu a trouvé des règles de, de, de gestion. Le pays est stable parce que les gens ont de quoi manger. Donc notre rôle c'est pas seulement de, de les pêcher mais de conserver aussi pour la génération future. Fishing trawlers aren't the only threat. Foreign-owned factories have sprung up to make fish meal, cheap feed for farm animals and aquaculture made from bony fish like sardines. In Senegal's biggest fishing port, Jol, locals could once buy cheap sardines at market. Now, buyers from the factories are snapping up the fresh catch and driving up the price. That's the, the, the sardinelle plat. Maintenant, depuis que les usines se sont installées, on n'arrive plus à avoir la quantité voulue par rapport aux régions. Et il y a une forte pression sur les ressources à travers la demande de ces usines. Sardines are a staple in Senegal and the main source of income in Jol. But they're becoming scarce. The factories need five kilograms of fish for every kilogram of meal. The women who process fish for the locals fear their jobs won't last. <laughs> Bari 
Fishing employs around 600,000 people in Senegal. That's nearly a fifth of the working population. With so much at stake, some local fishermen are taking matters into their own hands. Along the entire coastline, citizen patrols, supported by the environmental group Greenpeace, are learning how to find illegal ships. Their goal is to report them to the Senegalese Maritime Agency in the hope they'll take action. <laughs> Tonight, fisherman Mamadou Sa is in charge of the mission. Bon, on va s'aligner et puis on va y aller en file indienne pour rester groupé et par mesure de sécurité. Pourquoi c'est la nuit Alors on ne doit pas se séparer pour faire l'opération. They spot a foreign vessel in the catch area intended for local fishermen. The team has to get right alongside to photograph the insignia. Il a pas assez de surveillance. À chaque fois, on nous dit qu'il y a un manque de moyens. Donc, ils en profitent pour faire ces infractions-là. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire Nous, on va s'impliquer davantage. Nous savons que si on fait rien, d'ici peu le Sénégal n'aura plus de poissons, on est obligé d'aller en Mauritanie ou en Guinée ou autre part pour, pour chercher du poisson pour nous de nos populations. Il y a urgence, bien sûr, il y a urgence, tout le monde doit se lever. Et là, nous allons le faire savoir à tout le monde hein, pour que cela cesse. They accuse the authorities of doing nothing. For now, this vessel can keep fishing illegally without fear of repercussions. But pressure is growing on the Senegalese government to act. Fishing is the country's largest export sector, and it's in peril. Tensions with neighbors like Mauritania are increasing as desperate fishermen stray into their waters. Par la Mauritanie. Aujourd'hui, ce n'est plus le cas. Les gens qui avaient l'habitude d'aller en Mauritanie sans qu'il y ait des contraintes, aujourd'hui, ce n'est plus possible. Parce que là-bas, il y a des gardes de côte et les gardes de côte euh, ont tendance à, à tirer ses œufs. Senegal's dwindling fishing grounds have forced some to enter Mauritania's territory illegally. For Fatou Silla's son, it proved fatal. Falou Diakate was 19 when he was shot by the Mauritanian Coast Guard. My <laughs>
The ocean has long been the lifeblood of communities along the coast of Gabon. Lately, the waves have brought trouble here too. Hundreds of years ago, European countries came to the African continent to steal people from these shores. Then in more recent time, European and Chinese companies have come for the resources that are on land, from timber to iron to gold. And now foreign fishing fleets have come to plunder fish. Captain Peter Hammerstedt first came to Gabon seven years ago at the helm of the Sea Shepherd ship, the Bob Barker. We were hearing from local fishermen and from the government that incursions across the border were a regular occurrence. I'm talking a nightly occurrence that foreign flagged fishing vessels were fishing illegally in the waters of Gabon. These days he's working hand in hand with the authorities. Since 2016, Sea Shepherd has been conducting joint patrols with the government of Gabon to rid its waters of illegal fishing. Some of the countries around the African continent may not have the vessel assets that can cover the entirety of their maritime jurisdiction or the range to get the law enforcers to the scene of the crime. So Sea Shepherd provides the ship, the operating crew who run the vessel and the fuel, while the government partner, the host country, provides the law enforcement agents, the people with the authority to board and inspect and arrest vessels for illegal fishing. On board the Bob Barker, the crews scan the sea for suspicious ships. So maybe we can go south for a few hours. We know when the last, the limit of the turnaround is to go to Port Gentil, so we keep searching south. They soon come across a Chinese trawler and decide to take a closer look. Get the blue lights on, okay, so they don't think it's pirates. Yeah. Peter estimates 800 Chinese vessels regularly patrol the West African coast. The Chinese distant water fishing fleet is the largest foreign fishing fleet operating off the coast of West Africa. It also ranks first in prevalence of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. Considering that the largest fishing fleet is also the one most likely to break fisheries laws and regulations, it's the major driver of overfishing in the world. The inspection finds the trawler is acting legally and it's allowed to go. Sea Shepherd says the patrols are working in Gabon. And of course, a concern then is that the poaching problem moves to the waters of a neighboring country. That's why we're now moving from a national approach of dealing with illegal fishing to a more regional approach, ensuring that there's no place for the poachers to hide. Across West Africa, illegal fishing is depriving governments of billions of dollars each year. It's a cost Liberia can't afford to bear. In 2017, it followed the example of Gabon. The Coast Guard now conducts patrols on the Sea Shepherd ship, the Sam Simon. Australian activist Alastair Allen was one of the first captains to take out the Coast Guard patrols. So what, kind of, what kind of vessel is this? Uh, we're a fishing vessel, tuna, first sailor. 
Fishing for tuna. Fishing for tuna, correct. In this training exercise, he's playing the villain, caught in the act of illegal fishing. Okay. Now I'm going to control the fish. Okay. Okay. Now resist. Yep. We do drills all the time. Uh, it's really important for us to make sure that we're constantly doing drills and training. Uh, that way, when the situation arises and we need to be ready to go, um, everyone knows their roles, and uh, especially for the Sea Shepherd crew, for us, we know everything we need to do to successfully get the Liberian Coast Guard on board the vessel. This morning, the Sam Simon has a high-ranking visitor. General George, the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Liberian Armed Forces. We're really happy to have you on and come have a visit and see the ship. We've been really enjoying being on patrol in Liberia with the Coast Guard. It's been really, really great. So thank you for that opportunity. Thank you and thank you for your support. And this is my first time being on a ship. Is it? There this you is go. My very first time. Fantastic. So I'm excited That's to see you there, right? Excellent. The laundry and everything for. Liberia has introduced stiffer penalties for boats caught fishing without a permit. But tougher laws can do little without the resources to enforce them. I think that those vessels knew that the Liberian Coast Guard did not have the capabilities to go deep into the water, so they took advantage of that to come and fish. And that was the need to react because our local fishermen were going to be completely out of business. Even the economy was not going to be blooming from the water side. You go to an inspection and you have a vessel uh, that is not allowed to catch shark and you look in the fish and you see shark, what do you do? If that ship had been found fishing something it wasn't meant to, that would be in contravention of the law, and then we'd bring it to, to port in Monrovia and then, like the authorities, Coast Guard would decide what the, the fate of the, bed, the catch is after that. That's, yeah, I see. Make sure you're not behind the pole. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. As the general leaves, the crew notices a fishing vessel that's not broadcasting a tracking signal. It's going to be the same. It's the one that is small yeah. The plan is right now we've got a vessel um, that has no AAS and it looks like a, a midwater trawler to me. So we're just going to send both boats and we're just going to get an ID on the vessel right now. We're not going to board it yet, we haven't made that decision. We're just going to go check it out and see what we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. The other vessel is suspicious. We're just going to see. The Coast Guard quickly catches up to the trawler. Within minutes, it's surrounded. That all fishing gear is secured. I repeat, all fishing gear is secured. Uh, what we have here is a typical trawler. Um, this, is, this one's called the Menchin 23. Um, we did board, a, board its sister vessel, last well, one of its fleet, the Menchin uh, 17. Right now, I'm just touching back with base to see whether we uh, board this vessel or whether we just simply it looks to me like they're just transiting through, like freedom of navigation. All their fishing gear is secured, all the trawlers are chained up, so it looks to me like they're just moving through. Um, but we'll just wait and see. There's no evidence the trawler is acting illegally, so it's free to go. Can you advise we're going to return to the ship? Where are they going? I think they're crossing through. They're going to Abidjan. It's becoming harder for ships to avoid detection during the day, so many wait for the cover of night. 
As darkness falls, they grow bolder. Captain Allen and his crew are on alert, their eyes pinned to the monitors. In fact, almost more likely that a, a vessel will cross uh, late at night, early in, very early in the morning, 3, 4 a.m. Um, it's more unlikely that that'll be, that vessel will be on the, uh, marine traffic. It's much more likely that that'll be a dark vessel, a vessel that's got you know, no transponding happening at all. So how do you spot them? It's difficult to... So if a vessel's not on AIS, we patrol uh, close to the border and we use our radar basically to scan um, the area around us and look for vessels that might be making these incursions across the border um, uh, in areas that we suspect that they're, they're likely to fish. If they see a trawler fishing where it shouldn't, they move in. A few hours before sunrise, a Chinese vessel is spotted crossing into Liberian waters illegally. It's been fishing too close to the shore in an area reserved for small-scale fishermen. The crew appears to be trying to conceal the boat's identity. Why are you fishing? We are from the Liberian Coast Guard. We are responsible to protect the territorial water of Liberia. Uh, we caught you today fishing on the Liberian water. We don't have a people in compliance with our fishery law. So I will warn you properly. Do you understand me? After confiscating their passports, the crew escorts the Chinese ship to Monrovia the Liberian capital. There, the authorities seize its catch. Since patrols started here five years ago, 19 ships have been arrested on suspicion of fishing illegally in Liberia. Eight other West African nations are now working with Sea Shepherd. Overfishing is one of the largest challenges facing the world's oceans. We've seen what's possible in eliminating illegal fishing in the waters of Liberia, in the waters of Gabon. And if we can assist to shut down illegal fishing in those places, then we can assist in shutting down illegal fishing all around the African continent. If we can do it there, then we can do it in Latin America, we can do it in the South Pacific. And we, if we can do that, then we can really end overfishing. But we have to stay on top of the poaching problem. If the patrols stop, it's very likely that the illegal fishing problem comes back. In Robertsport, a Liberian town near Sierra Leone, locals say the fish are slowly returning. But with soaring global demand for seafood set to continue, the world's oceans are being pushed to the brink. Time is running out to turn back the tide.